So, David, how about your question from last night? Thanks for giving me time to think it over. You're a nice guy and one of my closest friends. I just don't want to go out with you. All right, I understand. Can we still run together? Yeah, sure, we can still do our morning runs. We can at least still be good friends. I'm glad. Thank you for understanding. You know who does like you? Who? Myra. She's totally into you. You mean the short, mousy girl sitting with her friends in the back? Yeah, how'd you know she was there? Because I can feel her staring at me. I think she's a sweet person. And so are you. You're a guy who needs a girlfriend. I think it'd be cute if you two got together. This is unfucking believable I'm, so, I'm sorry, sorry, everyone. Please excuse me, but this is bullshit. <laughs> so this is how this works? I'm some guy you feel sorry for. Somebody who needs a girlfriend, just not the one I'm attracted to. Is this about Myra? What's wrong with Myra? Do you have your mirror in your purse? My what? The small mirror that you have. The one that you check to, to see if your hair is out of place. Can I see it? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Is it broken? Oh, oh no. Is it? It looks fine. Then I haven't made a mistake. If I'm not ugly, then why are you rejecting me? Another day on top of the world, my noble companion. America, the hideously deformed. Land of dualities. Equal parts obese and underfed. Proud and penniless. A true melting pot of diamonds and dog shit. And if I say so myself, we couldn't have picked a better day to be alive. Yeah. This world's... Full of all kind of scum. A lot of refuse, hypocrisy, cheaters, backstabbers. You know what? I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Tell la vie auquel vous entendez vous? C'est le monde. La putain du monde. Bien sûr, vous ne pouvez pas vivre. That's what I mean. Sitting on top of these thrones of garbage make me really appreciate what I have in life. As always, your astute observations color my gaze in extravagant hues. What's on the agenda? We've either much to do, or we don't do shit. Either option sounds absolutely capital. What say you? I say we take a break from panhandling for a while. We explore the zeitgeist of the human condition. Not ours, of course. Really not much to say about that, except this. The American dream is the opiate of the masses. And like any good narcotic, makes lies truer than truth. And once you reach that highest high, throws you down in the gutter. No one wants to hear about that part. Hey! There is no shame in this occupation. You learn a lot about living after losing it all. But now we have the rest of our lives ahead of us. The common folk think we've died inside the moment we're homeless. <laughs> Fools! All of them. It is, as a matter of fact, a rebirth. A realization. That society is the greatest theatrical production in our species history. We're told by teachers, cops, doctors, and assholes, the only way to survive is if you get a job, preferably a corporate one, where millions sacrifice their identities for name tags. 
But guess what? If your parents disown you, can't keep work and spend more time getting shit-faced than awake, well then you might as well toss your birth certificate in the shredder. For society has no shortage of trapdoors. Now you're back in the wilderness. And believe me, Jack, your animal instincts kick in quickly. But we are more than animals. We are philosophers. And it is our duty to cherish existence and prove every myth in God right and wrong all at once. A spiritual journey. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Let's say you we find the Holy Grail and drink booze out of it. Fuck no! Something a little more substantial, you goddamn cretin! Well, we're gonna need a significant amount of alcohol for the sake of clarity. I lift booze from this liquor store every time I buy gum there. Normally I'm against such unscrupulous operations. But, admittedly, my vision isn't as blurry as I should like. So let me put on my extra-large trench coat. La vita bella! So, you're worried about how women see you? No, I'm not worried about it. I haven't said it before, but I'm saying it now. I'm attractive. Being shallow is not attractive. I'm shallow today because you provoked me. Normally, I'm a nice guy. Just because I'm modest about how I look doesn't mean I'm oblivious to it. Why would you suggest that I get with someone less desirable than you? Isn't it obvious that I'm looking for a girl like you? You can't have a girl like me. Why? You lost your chance the moment you turned out to be an asshole. That's not fair. You turned me down way before I got angry and defensive. You turned down the nice guy. So what's this about? Me rejecting you or suggesting that you date Myra? It's about Myra, but you didn't suggest it. You asked it as a favor. I did not. That's a horrible thing to say. Come on. I just got turned down. Then I told I'm a good match for somebody who'd like to screw something pretty. That's like losing twice. Myra's not like that. Yes, she is like that. You're not the one getting felt up every time you run into her. Like how? Like touching my arms, my back, my stomach, her hands hovering above my ass while she's talking to me. You should take it as a compliment. What kind of double standard is that? No way would you tell a girl to consider a guy's groping a compliment. It's sexual harassment. You're exaggerating. Am I? Yes, you're taking this way too personally. Look, Myra can find some other nice doofus to bang. There are plenty of suckers out there, but I'm not one of them. She doesn't get to have a nice guy. And why is that? She lost her chance the moment she turned out to be a pervert. You're an idiot. Well then let's say I'm saving her a lot of hassle then. She doesn't have to find out I'm an idiot, and she doesn't have to get hurt. She'll never have to give me up or lose me because she'll never get the chance. Hey. Hey. Hey, mm. motherfucker. Let me tell you something about the goddamn universe. Do go on. I'm all ears and orifices. Don't, don't tell me about orifices. I didn't know a thing or two. I got a syphilis to prove it. <laughs> Go on about the universe. I'll never, never, I'll never understand a guy that word is saying. That, that's, that's, that's because you don't know him. I've met the guy, and I'll, I'll tell you, he, does, he doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care. I don't claim to know knowledge. All I know. The stars! This glitter farted from God's ass after a raucous New Year's mm. Eve. No, you can't back out. You can't back out now. It's too late now. No! You can't back out now. No! Oh, yeah. You drank the Kool-Aid. 
And before you knew it, he was busting through the walls. Except it wasn't the Kool-Aid man. It was the government in a pretty little disguise. And you fell for it. I fucking knew it was him. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Mighty. Oh, hi there, young road scholar. Oh, God. <laughs> Care to donate to charity? Spare a dollar for four quarters? Well, it looks like you two have had a relaxing day. The best day your wallet is willing to No! No! It's just, just, just fine. Thank you. It's considering that we haven't died of exposure yet, I say we're we're holding our own. Just, just fine. Don't try that sentimental crap with me, bruh. You two wouldn't be homeless if you're really that bad. I mean, seriously, how hard is it to get a job flipping burgers or spinning a car wash sign on the highway while dancing? In realidad, solo se trata de la tarea más difícil. Más difícil de conseguir en estos días. What? Also, it's kind of hard to apply for fast food when you don't have a fucking address. You would have an address if you stayed in college. Uh, I, I've never been to college. Exactly. Exacto mundo, Padre. You didn't go to college because you're too stupid to succeed. Now, I'm, I'm just so tired of all you hapless junkies whining about hardships, sitting on corners. That's all you do all day, you just shit yourselves. Keeping the hard working people from making progress. These slums are your creation. Maybe if you collectively stop pissing on street corners and coveting trash like wild rats, you might feel better about the city you live in and for God forbid, conduct yourself accordingly. For motherfuck's sake, we can't build a single goddamn shopping center without one of you dirtbags living in it, begging for all the stuff you're too lazy to work for. You gave up responsibility, so why not just let you die? Here's a better question. Why don't you simply fuck off if we discussed you so... Hey, don't tell me what to do, essay. You need to learn the difference between between a command and a suggestion. We're merely suggesting you fuck off. Hi. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, of course. Yeah, I got the memo. Uh-huh. Yeah, hold on. Here's some coffee, fags. We're not homosexuals! Just two men with a keen sense of fashion. There's no coffee in this cup. Flying prick. So yeah, man, about the universe. Just hold on a second. Let me turn the fucking rain off. So you're telling me that the government is the Kool-Aid man. The stars are God's fart glitter. And the universe is a dickhead who doesn't even like us? And that's not even... That's not even the two quarters of it. Wow. That all makes sense. Of course it makes sense. It's science. Does that guy ever give us my money? Are you through making a scene? 
Everybody's busy on their eye faces in my books. Nobody's listening to us. Besides, I'm just trying to be real with you. I'm not going to pretend to like somebody that I don't find attractive, because that would be unfair, and it's not what I want for myself either. I want a girl that I've earned the trust and respect of. Why has that not happened with you? All right. I knew it. I can't be around this. Why am I being friend-zoned? You know what? This conversation is bullshit. Because as a matter of fact, I don't want to fuck every male friend I've made. That's not what this is about. Oh, really? This is about a serious emotional connection that I can't have with you. You mean sex? Well, that's part of it. David, if we got into a serious emotional relationship, we would end up hurting each other. I didn't want that to happen to our friendship. You didn't? Honestly, I'm about ready to walk out that door once I've made my point and said my piece. The friend zone was my way of keeping our friendship from falling apart. That's a lot better than how women get friend zoned. How do women get friend zoned? Gus have sex with us, then put us in the friend zone. They think sex means nothing. But that's not true. Women want sex as much as men do, but we have the responsibility of reproducing for our species. We make babies. And when I decide I want to have sex with a guy, I'm very aware that contraception might fail. And then I'll have to make a decision. Either spare the child a life of hardship, or start a family with the man who fathered him. If that man is stuck around. That's thinking a little far ahead. Sex isn't about that. That is exactly what sex is about. It's about running the risk with someone you love. And I want it, but I don't want it with you. I don't want to make any bratty hipsters children because they end up little assholes just like you. Would you like a refill in your coffee or tea? Mm -hmm. Yes. Please. Don't get shit. So, Evan, listen. How much longer can we keep this up? Pretending that we don't have any troubles. Kidding ourselves that this squalor can be relished with pride. What opulence is there to be had as exiles? Don't abandon your throne of garbage so soon. Your trouble is all in perception. I see meaning where all you hear is silence. I don't pity you, but I would recommend a different outlook. Stress will kill you. We should be dead already. Now that's what society expects from us, and I don't doubt that that's what they hope. Why do you think they pass all these laws to keep us off the street. It's because property is what's valued of people, not the property inside. It's a human being. Well, so what, you're a veteran? Well, too fucking bad. You don't own a home, so you can get out. You're scaring away all the customers. And you're a mother with two kids? Get in that homeless shelter and shut up. I'm not sure how clear I've made my stance on society. With all due respect, the bureaucrats can fuck nards and die slowly. The worth of human life trumps all currency. It needs neither shelter nor acceptance from the masses. I served a country I couldn't be happier to live in. Whether or not the American people appreciate my contribution, they can pile my corpse atop the mountain of economic failure and burn me for energy. It doesn't matter. I have purpose, and so do you. Your refusal to accept this is off-putting, to put it lightly. Well, that's nice of you to say, considering how excruciating it is to put up with your stupidity. Your fight is with fear, and it's fucking lying to you. But I don't think mere physical property is all you lost. 
There was something more, wasn't it? Piss off. <laughs> love! Love, that's it, isn't it? Now, what do you know about love, fuckwit? Oh, yes, the human connection. Considered the most human and infallible can in fact be the most inhuman and fallible. Oh, trust me, Jack. I know plenty about love. I know it takes two to tango and three to trip fall and black in your eye. The girl I had was dynamite in every sense of the explosion. Every night with her was a near-death experience. Sounds downright demonic. They say Satan was the prettiest of all angels. And my god, she was just as seductive. But the facade wore off. I saw just how human she really was. And it disgusted me. What did she do? Nothing. It's who she was. Christ, was she petty and selfish. She thought I didn't value her opinions as well as my own. She thought I, her well-being wasn't a strong priority of mine. She thought in order to be a real couple, I had to sacrifice all of my goddamn time to her. I would have happily done that if she offered more than what she had. Her opinions were just that. I would have honored her perspective if she accepted the wisdom that I provide for the good of all souls. If she considered my physical needs, my social needs, her well-being would have been a stronger priority. It got to the point where the time I spent was time wasted. So I left her and we're better off for it. I'm pretty sure that ended because you were being a dickhead. That's just your opinion, man. No, that's no more an opinion than do unto others as they would do unto you is an opinion. I mean, when you truly love someone, you love them for who they are. Not necessarily for what they give you or how they treat you. You love them for who they are, and if you don't, then your relationship is doomed to fail. Whether it be friendship or fucking. You can't lose what you never had, ever. You can only lose what you thought you had. Oh! Oh, then tell me, Casanova, how did you lose your cum-guzzling strumpet? Did she scar your junk with STDs? Or did the pimp fry her shriveled cunt off your knob? Because you didn't have the cash for 15 more minutes. Tell me! What's your goddamn story, huh? She was the most beautiful woman that the gods could have made for me. This was a love that had no cause. She was kind. She offered me food to share. She always used all of her change for our meals. Somehow, she saw my suffering as a worthy cause for help. It became a privilege to be alive with her. She taught me how to find exuberance in everything that I see, and she filled me with delight when this unforgiving planet sought to fill my system with misery. She was a dope fiend. And she overdosed in a Walgreens bathroom. Now she's dead.
Well, suffice it to say, life is as much about choices as it is about fate. Whether it has meaning or we're talking out of our asses, we're alive. And I'd like to think that today was a good day to have stuck around for. Suffice it to say, I'm glad you, s you said it anyway. Hey, there are the two queers that ruined my shoes. <laughs> Queers. What is with your interest in manly butt pumping activities? Could you at least give us some real coffee? The gesture is incredibly misleading. I don't want it to end like this. No, you wanted to throw a shit fit and then storm out. Well, it's not gonna happen that way. You don't get to make speeches with me, and you don't walk away before I explain where I'm coming from. This is our friendship, a two-way conversation, and I'm gonna say what I have to say in response to your anger and hurt feelings. Fine, go ahead and finish. Don't take this out on me. You don't get to be angry with me because I rejected you. I'm telling you, as your friend, I don't want this. You don't even know what you want. Do you? No. But neither do you. You haven't really thought this out or considered what it is you're asking of me. What you're doing is acting on some animal impulse. Shannon, I love you. And you can't tell me that I don't. I know this is real. And I'm not gonna change that for the sake of our friendship. This is where I want our friendship to go and I'm not gonna stop hoping to be with you. there was no avoiding that after all. Well, I think she'll get over it. Eventually. So what's gonna happen with us? That. I have no idea. I meant what I said. I'm sorry that I got hostile. It takes a lot for me to confess this kind of stuff. Yeah, I sense that. And it definitely changes things between you and I. I'd like to pass an idea by you. Yeah? We're still gonna be friends, but with the understanding that you have these feelings for me. I need time to figure out how I feel about you. You can be temperamental, stubborn, and a little high-strung. You can also be kind, thoughtful, and usually a pretty good listener. We've been able to be good friends. And I, I think the only way that this could work is if we let things develop naturally from our friendship. That puts me... That puts me in the same position I've been trying to avoid. You don't understand how desperate it is for lonely men. N not talking about creeps or stalkers. I'm talking about boys who were raised to be sensitive gentlemen. It's... We grow up with the idea we have to find a female partner. But all we see are women getting fed up with men. We want to respect girls' feelings. And girls feel like being left alone. That's because we're fed up from the attention we get from bad men. But that's not you. And it doesn't have to do with you. Don't worry, I'm not filing you away in some back corner of my mind. You're still my best friend. That means you've got a strong head start on other guys. And if my feelings change, we could try to make this work. As long as you're leaving the door open, then I have the patience to wait. So, morning runs tomorrow? Nah, fuck that. You go run by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna head out? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 